So what is the morning routine for Buddhist monks? Uh, this is a question that I get asked often. Uh, apparently there is uh, big trends regarding uh, productive morning routines, uh, minimalism, and for me, I don't know too much about that. <laughs> but really, for monks, we've been doing this uh, for the last 2,600 years. And for us, we, it's not trendy. <laughs> it really is just a lifestyle that we use to train ourselves, and it's been going on for centuries. And I just want to reveal uh, some of the things or give you tips of some of the things that we do to prepare in the morning. So of all the morning routines out there, I feel like there's one key difference that what we do in the monastery and what uh, people are now using as a morning routine. So hopefully uh, I can make it clear and can share that with you. But in no particular order, I'm just gonna share with you five things that we do in the morning to train ourselves and how we get prepared for the day. And hopefully it helps, so let's go. When people are starting a morning routine, of course they try to get up early and then they go right away but for Buddhist monks, same thing in that we wake up early. So around 4, 4.30 uh, to get a head start. And then before we even get out of bed, one thing we do is just keep your eyes closed. No rush yet. And take the time to breathe. That's it. Breathe. Your mind is already still from uh, the night's sleep. So take advantage of that. Again, lay in your bed, breathe, close your eyes, breathe again, and place your mind at your center. Our mind can wander because it's the uh, getting ready for the day, uh -uh, not yet. Bring it to your center, bring it here. We're not thinking about what we're gonna do today yet, we're not thinking uh, or making plans yet. We're not worrying about what happened yesterday. It already passed. So we're not going backwards and we're not going forwards. For now, just be here. Place your mind and just rest. Take a deep breath. And then the second part to that is we reflect on death. And that may sound morbid, but it's not. Again, don't take good or bad. Don't judge it as good or bad, but it's just a training where maybe we forgot this, but today is not guaranteed. Today is not promised. And if you saw a video that I released a couple days ago, uh, we were making a meditation hall. Uh, you saw how the workers, the local workers, uh, along with the lay community and the monks worked together to develop this meditation hall. And this process took us close to almost a year. And one of the workers who worked with us uh, was unfortunately involved in an accident and he lost his life. And by the time we released this video, he was no longer here. And also with the COVID pandemic, people are facing a lot of death. And again, today is not guaranteed. We do not know how long we're gonna live, 100, <laughs> the 100 year mark is not guaranteed. So again, with that, we just wanna come from uh, seeing things as it really is, out of a gratitude and just know that today is a brand new day. Everything in the past, gone. But this moment gives us a new opportunity to develop ourselves, cultivate ourselves, and in Buddhist lens to make more merit, which means to do more good. What a wonderful opportunity. So because we wake up every day over and over and over and over again, it can get old and we can get mindless, but before we even start the day, train yourself. Bring your mind back to this present moment. And like I said, reflect on death. This day is not promised and how lucky and how fortunate I am to be alive. Start there. That is the beginning of a morning routine.
make your bed. In this video, I talked about how making your bed or not making your bed develops your habits and what it reveals about you and how it affects your life. So if you have not seen it, please feel free to take a look. Uh, many people are starting to understand the importance of making their beds, which is a great thing. So continue to do that. Uh, the piece, however, that I would like to add is don't make your bed just to make the bed, but use it as a training. For monks in the monastery, we only have three items. <laughs> I have my blue mat, I have my robe, uh, what you see as my blanket, and then the other set of robes as my pillow. That's it. And when we wake up, just having that three item, I still use it as a training to purify my mind and get everything organized. Do it in a mindful way with intention, where use it as this making my bed. It's just not another act, but it's really uh, training again. It's preparing me for the day. And making your bed is so important because it seems very insignificant. But again, this insignificant thing, this very small thing, is what allows the big things to happen. So it trains you of how to follow through. It gives you a win in the morning and you kept your space clean. Uh, another way, again, like I said, of practicing your mind. So immediately when you wake up, then put your bed away neatly, gently, and get rid of the bad habit. And this is not where I wake up very early and then I sleep in my bed until 12 p p.m. <laughs> that, 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 that's not how that works. But the training is really when it's time to get up, we get up, we fold it, we keep it nicely, uh, we take care of our room, and then we're done. We're on to the rest of the day. Finish your task cleanly, and then let's move on to the next, not a lounge area. So this is part of the training and part of our morning routine. Chanting and meditation. This is so key and part of our training for Buddhist monks. And we do this every single day. I'm tired. Yes, <laughs> it is not easy. I went to bed late. Uh, yes, it is not easy. I have a lot of work. To, yes, it is not easy. And every single day we still do it uh, because we want to take full advantage of this space. This is where our mind has not interacted with the outside world yet. Uh, it's more calm. It's more still. So automatically then we go into chanting to get it even more still. And slowly when you start chanting, chanting, and then you get into the rhythm. It slows your mind down even more. And then after that, then we go into meditation. And meditation for us is so key because all the dirt, all the emotions, all the heaviness, all the thoughts and the stories, uh, the drama that we have in our minds, we just allow it to settle down. And this is the grounding process. This meditation cultivate this new energy, this pure energy. When you're first starting, you may be tired because it's early and it's in the morning, but by the time you're finished, it's like the gas in the car and now you're not on empty. You have this new uh, energy, you have this new inspiration, you have this new motivation to keep you going. And more importantly, you are grounded. You're not flustered within the day. Uh, how many of you have woken up where uh, you're late and then immediately you have to get dressed and you're on to the day. And then when you interact with other people, then you can get into conflict because your mind is not ready, it's not grounded. But take this time because you're prepping yourself for the day. Slow down. And the model or the sharing from our master, he says that stillness is the key to success. And we tend to think that we should wake up, we should go fast and do more and get more. Oh, okay, that's one, one way of looking at it. But if you really understood it uh, from 
a wisdom lens. It's just ground yourself, slow down, get as clear as possible and prepare yourself so when you're out in the world, you can see yourself, others and your situation clearly. And when your lens has been cleaned and it's clear, you are ready and have set yourself up to be more successful, uh, to be more protected and grounded and ready for the day. So this is one of the tips. Do an act of generosity. So for us, the way we practice generosity is giving an opportunity for the lay people to do alms offering. You see us in the morning very early. Sometimes it's hot, it's raining, it's cloudy, it's wet, it does not matter, but every single day we go out there. And I know it may be strange from the Westerner's point of view of you're just there to go take. How, how is that giving? But for us, um, I remember someone reached out to me. I think they're from a different country in Europe. And she's like, I've never seen monks. I've never interacted with them. And what you guys do as an alms offering to give to monks, I wish I had that. And I want to uh, practice an act of giving. And then I don't have that opportunity. So again, very foreign concept. But the idea behind that is for us is going out there. We give the lay people an opportunity to train themselves. They prepare the food. They uh, offer the best that they have and by doing this act of giving, giving to the monks, they actually release themselves of greed. And this is one way that they get to purify their minds. And going on alms rounds to me is so beautiful because we get to see the interaction, the heart of the lay people and the fact that they come out every single morning, uh, train themselves to give, is just absolutely beautiful. So again, the monastery, it's a symbiotic relationship. We support the lay community uh, spiritually. We provide the Dhamma. Uh, we give them that kind of support and talk about the spiritual life. And then for the lay community, is it's reciprocal in that they care for the monks uh, via material needs. And it's uh, a relationship where it supports one another. But for monks, that is our way of giving, participating and contributing to the Sangha and to the community at large. So for those out there at home who do not have this opportunity, do a version for yourself at home. Uh, one of the things when I did not have access to monks to give was I, after every single meditation, I would offer a dollar. I went to the bank, um, cashed this $100 bill into $1 bill each. And each day after my meditation, when my mind was still, when it was bright, I would donate this $1, put it in a cupboard, put it in a drawer, and then make a resolution for your life. And then at the end of the month, the end of two months, then I would go and offer and donate this. Another option would be making breakfast for your partner, for your children, um, getting them ready for school, or maybe feeding your pets, um, cleaning the house, but there are so many different ways that you can give. And for us, even before we have breakfast and for the lay people, even before they have breakfast, we do an act of generosity. Give of your resource, give of your time, give up of your Dhamma and your wisdom. There's many ways of giving, but each day train yourself to give. That is part of a morning routine. Do chores. So in Thailand for us, or in the monastery, uh, what we do is called Rapbun. And Rapbun is really just daily chores. And we have two types. Uh, the first one is uh, individual chores. So we clean our rooms, we clean living areas next to our room, 
um, we set up for breakfast, but different things that we can take care of ourselves. For, for me is, since I'm still a new monk, <laughs> a younger monk, my duty is the bathroom. And I think it's wonderful training. So I have no complaints with that. The second types of chore that we do is the group chore. And that's typically in the afternoon. So why is doing chores in the morning so important? Why that is important is because the chore that we're doing is very simple. It keeps us in the moment. We just pay attention to the task at hand. It connects our hands back to the earth. And we, doing this activity gets us out of the thinking part. This is again another form of training in mindfulness and being present in this moment. So this is an addition to the other morning routines, again, to help us to cultivate that mindfulness practice. This is a bonus tip that I don't think anyone has talked about, but what will help you to prepare for the morning is start the day before. And one thing that you can start is regarding dinner. Do not have such a heavy dinner <laughs> because many people will have dinner as the biggest meal. And then when we have uh, such a big dinner, then when we're sleeping, we don't get that quality rest because the body is digesting and it's working over time. When the body is supposed to be resting, and recharging, it's actually spending that energy to digest the food that you just ate. So again, to prepare for the night before, for Buddhist monks, for us, we don't eat dinner. Uh, one, because we do not need that much energy. Our time is spent on meditation. So we eat breakfast, we eat lunch, and then for the rest of the day, our stomach is empty. And when it's time for us to go to sleep, it's so much easier. I remember before coming to the monastery, I always had issues sleeping um, because one of the reason may be because I would have big meals. And then when it was time to sleep, I would have all this energy and then my body would have to burn it off. But now that we have nothing in our stomach, then it's easy. I'm already tired. I go to sleep within minutes and then I wake up refreshed and it supports my rest of the day. So give that a try. Just be mindful of how much you eat the night before, experiment with it, and then just taper off if it's uh, too much. And if it's not enough, then add a little bit more, but experiment and try it out. So what is the key point and why am I even sharing this? And really is because many times when people talk about uh, morning routines, it comes from a space of just productivity. Like I said in the other videos where people are wanting to 2X and 3X and 1000X and it, it's just a lot and it affects your mental health. So <laughs> be very careful. But in the monastery I'm sharing is because why we do things is with intention. And the intention for us is really using everything in the morning as a way to train our mind. We follow the precepts, we do our meditation in order to cultivate the wisdom. And when your mind is bright, stable, clear, neutral, and healthy, then automatically productivity comes, motivational comes, uh, inspiration comes, you're positive and you're relaxed. But I think many people use it as a way to get results. But for us, it's no. Use it to train your mind so you can develop wisdom. This wisdom can then be used to teach yourself, to apply the information and knowledge that you know to fix your old habits and continuously improve your life. But the mind for us is the forerunner. It sets the tone for everything that we do. So get your mind very still and very bright. 
The second thing that I would want to add about the morning routine is the purpose is to get our mind still. Not to wake up early, to get our mind racing again. And many people will ask me, uh, Venerable Nick, can I wake up very early and then I want to watch the news and then I want to uh, read the, what's on the stock market. I want to see what Bitcoin is doing. I want to, and then they just want to uh, engage more. I'm going to listen to talk radio. I'm going to watch a movie and no, <laughs> for us, no. If you're doing that, that's, that's okay. But I'm just sharing from uh, the training of the monastery. And for us is the purpose of a morning routine is to utilize that time. Get your mind very still and do activities where you're not thinking. Just get still. Let everything settle down. Because when we wake up that early and already get our mind thinking and already frantic, you're not setting yourself up as properly. Experiment with these kind of activities for you, but just keep in mind that the activities that we do should not make us think more. It's to get us out of our heads and the intellect part. And then, again, the training to access what? Access the wisdom, which is the inner well. Don't go on Google, but you know, to find information because it's an endless web of information, but get still so you can access this. This is the real inner internet. And in this ocean, you can find all the answers. Just get as still as possible and set yourself up uh, the best way you can to prepare for the rest of the day because it's hard out there. Once you leave your house, it gets very chaotic. It's very noisy. And this is the preparation for that. So I hope you can use this information to develop a morning routine or tweak the morning routine that you already have. Um, some people will then ask me or will tell me that I don't have enough time. I don't want to uh, do that or it's not so important, but okay, sure. Um, and many people will play these kind of games with themselves, use excuses, and okay, sure, you can try that route. But for me, then I want to go a, a different angle and really is talking about children for parents out there because it's difficult. We're stuck in our habits to look at ourselves and to change ourselves because we're used to it. So now let's talk about your kids. Yes, I'm going to go there. <laughs> we're going to talk about kids. And the kids that I work with back home as the therapist, again, at the group home, working with foster kids, many of them would have um, behavioral issues, emotional issues, and that's why we were there to help to stabilize them, to teach them coping skills and tools to regulate. What was the problem? Many of the time, the issues was that the kids did not know how to emotionally regulate their distress tolerance was very little or none in some cases it felt like <laughs> but developing the foundation is key and i would say yes does it take time is it difficult of course but it's an investment and it's worth investing in because if we cut this corner the effects will be felt later well, I don't have time. Now. Well, you're going to have to make time. You're going to have to make time because the kids will not develop these skills of how to self-regulate. Then when they're out in the world that it's full with social media and a lot of noise and peer pressure, then they fall and they collapse because they have not been able to develop that foundation. And then you're going to need to get them the support, emotional support, that they need later, so you will take the time. So why I'm sharing this again is because this is important. It's just the same reason when people talk about their health. I just don't have time. I don't have time to meditate. I don't have time to exercise. I don't have time to eat healthy. Okay, sure, no time, no time. Yeah, but when you're sick and you have to go to the hospital and your body shuts down, you will make time. 
that's just how it is. So be proactive, use the wisdom and take the time and nurture that and develop this or you'll have to take the time later and going backwards, retraining uh, yourself to undo a habit is not easy. So when you are here in this moment, hopefully you can uh, utilize this morning routine and combining with the intention of training yourself for mindfulness, grounding, meditation, get still and clear. So then when you interact with the world, um, you're so much stronger and well prepared. So I know this is a very big tangent, but for me, I think it's uh, important and it's a necessary conversation for us to have because time and time again, uh, we're faced with these issues and people are coming to us and they're struggling because the foundation is not there. And when anything happens out in the outside world to them and they feel like their, uh, their wall, uh, their coping skills is not strong enough. And this is why. And I hope this perspective and sharing you with the intention of the morning routine helps you and your life. So let's take a breath. <laughs> that was a lot. And if you have to replay it and look at it uh, one more time or take notes, feel free to and use each other for support. We also have a Reddit community and just help one another. And as always from Thailand, thank you. And I uh, hope you guys are all safe and sharing all my blessings with you. So thank you so much. Have a good day.